continuing where we left off in the last episode, uh, in this fourth episode we'll be building the homepage and generally continuing the setup a little bit of uh, our actual files and things like um, variables. So we'll start off with actually the web font um, that, we, that I've chosen, which is uh, Montserrat and Leto. Uh, we'll be setting up a few other SCSS variables for things like colors and that kind of thing. Um, then actually we'll do our first bit of coding and I'll create the header and the footer of the website. Uh, inside of the header, the logo and the menu as well, and then exporting the images for our two mastheads. So, when I'm starting a website, I generally like to look at the, the overall flat flat website PSD, just get a rough idea on my head how I'm going to lay it out. So, first of all, obviously, I'm thinking that this is probably going to be our header section here, um, as it's probably going to be on every page of the website this green bar with the menu and the logo inside of it. Uh, then, this section here. Uh, Again, I'm thinking this is probably only going to be on the home page, really. So we'll have to consider how we actually lay this out in our HTML. We need to make it nice and clean that, so that it can be included on just the home page. Uh, scrolling down, again, just our home page for my latest projects. Uh, Got to consider how these items are going to repeat because they're all pretty much the same, just mirror images. So obviously this block of code is going to be very similar to this block of code. Um, so when the, the tablet or the iPad is on the left and on the left, that's just going to be repeating apart from the image and the text is going to change obviously. Uh, scrolling down, uh, again we got this other masthead with just an image uh, image and another image showing inside with some text and a button. That possibly might be on a few uh, pages. I haven't really thought about that too much. Um, this website is only a personal website so it's nothing that you can think about too much. This video series is really just to get you thinking about how, how I build my websites, how you can uh, take a few of the tips that I, I do, how I create them quickly and that kind of thing. Then obviously again the footer, very simple, uh, probably going to be on every single page of the website, uh, probably a footer element with just some um, UL LI menu with some links in it to my social networks that I'm on and obviously the standard copyright, pretty boring stuff. Um, so other than that, the web font, uh, we're just going to use Google web fonts for, for this item. There's a lot better ways of doing fonts but this is only two fonts we're using. I want to try and keep this site quite quick. Um, there is some nice things like um, typecast uh, for using fonts um, if you want if you want to get the real particular one that you want and see how they laid out. Uh, but as I said, Google Web Fonts is all we'll be using here. Uh, so just google.com forward slash fonts. Another font I want already is called Montserrat. Uh, so we can quickly just use it. So if we pick one of these quick quick cues, uh, I do want the normal and the bold version. And in this case, uh, you can either link this web font up in your header of your, your website, or I'm personally just going to include it in my SAS files directly. So to do that, come over here, come to my typography uh, file, which is imported by my style sheet. Um, so we'll put this code that Google gave us at the top here. Now we can say font family Montserrat uh, and obviously give it a fallback of maybe Arial and son, uh, Sans Serif. And we'll actually set the first backup as Helvetica and then Arial. I spelled that wrong, didn't I? And um, what was the other font? The other font we want to use is Leto. Again, just type that in here. I'll just grab it, quick use it here. Uh, this one will be the, the font for the general website, and we do only want the one size of it because generally our headings and those kind of things will be using Montserrat for those. So again, just grab the import file, put it over here. And actually already I'll swap this round, so I'll set the default to be Leto and we'll save this monster app for things like our H1, H2, H3, H4, H5 and H6. And we'll do the font family as monster app with a fallback of Helvetica, Arial and Sans Serif. 
So this is the time you can kind of get more fancy if you want with SAS. So at the moment here I've manually typed out H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. Um, as on Truly Code I've posted uh, quite lately uh, a way of just automatically creating all the, those elements. So if we want to do want to do from H1 to H5, we could just change these integers here. So I'll uh, quickly just grab all this code that I've written before, paste it in here, and then we can say for the headings from one to six we want it to be font family of Montserrat and then Helvetica so let's get rid of all that and then if we go to our styles uh, if I just quickly set set it to be uncompressed so that we can actually read it properly and we find where that is in our code we can see here that it's actually exported a bit of code here up to that. So if we ever want to say, yeah, actually, it's only our H1s to our H4s that we want to be this font family of Montserrat. Um, now we, in our CSS files, we can see it's H1, H2, H3, and H4, not H5 and H6. So it's just the kind of example of the, the way you can possibly save yourself time in the future with uh, SAS. Um, just an example. Uh, so other than that, after I got our web fonts loaded, the normal thing that I like to do is actually set my variables from things like colors. So I got a file here called var vars, and the two ones that I normally use are dark and brand. Generally, dark will be my web font color, uh, my font color in general. So using a pretty darkish gray seven seven seven, and the brand is I left it at default of blue. But actually, obviously, looking at the site overall, the general theme is a gr this green color. And I got a good app called Frank the Loop um, for picking colors and then grabbing the hex value. Uh, it's 89 cents or whatever uh, from the App Store on Mac. I'm not really sure if there's anything on Windows, but um, you can obviously just pick the color in, in uh, Photoshop anyway and manually do it that way to copy that color. Whereas it, on my Mac, I just press Command, Alt, and F because that's a shortcut I assigned. Then just got this nice magnifying glass around. I pick the exact pixel I want. So in this case, just this green. Come back to the sublime, paste it in, and I've got that green color then saved as my uh, variable. Uh, other than that, that's our variable setup and our web font setup. So if we actually open the file now in our Chrome, just to see how this index file is laying out. Obviously, nothing in there at the moment, as it's completely empty. So if you follow in the second episode, you'll see some of the packages that I use, um, Emmet being one of them. It's really nice for just building a website very quickly. So I can just do exclamation mark, tab, and straight away we've got our building blocks for a basic website. So we're using the doc type of HTML, HTML language English, setting up our header element with the character set of eight, and then our title for a document. So at the moment, I'll just call it Alex Wigmore's personal website. Uh, inside of there we've got our body obviously we need to link up our CSS style sheet so we can just do that type in link tab and it automatically fills in our rel equal style sheet with our href puts us in there nicely so that we can link that up as well so we can link up our styles.css and just to test everything's working we'll do h1 tab uh, hello world and that's there nicely using our web font it's worked first time so we can see that it's using our Montserrat uh, font. Actually, that reminds me, I need to change that back to H6. Oh, I just need to save, that's all. Uh, let's have a look. Yep, that's good. Okay, so going back to the Photoshop, let's look at how the HTML is laid out again. So, I said earlier, this will probably just be our header element. So let's get that set up. Give ourselves some room. So if we do header tab, we've got our header element. Inside of that, we know that this is going to be probably within the container file that I mentioned earlier, which is a part of our framework, for me, which means the form, well, the elements never actually go to the full width of the browser. They stay within this kind of confine. So if we do container as an example, just quickly to make sure you understand this, you'll now see that this goes and becomes within this little container element. So you can see that we've got the margin either side of it. And even if our browser is huge, this hello is in right flush against the left edge here. It's always within a nice structure. Uh, so let's give this header a class of site header. And 
for this uh, kind of element, we're probably going to be quite a, a few uh, CSS rules in here. So we'll create its own CSS file, uh, well, SAS file. So to do that again using our advanced new file plugin, well, package, uh, just type scss forward slash. And we want it to be, uh, again, a, a dependency or an include um, sheet. We don't want it to compile on its own. So underscore header.scss. Save that and make sure that's getting imported. So we'll put it here, import our header sheet. Uh, so it can't find the. Ah. I put, <laughs> when I did the advanced new file, I said put it in an SCSS folder. Actually, obviously, that should have been a SAS folder. So just move that in there, delete that. There, that. there you go, save that, and that should compile. And then in here, so we'll set up our site header to have our background color of brand. And this brand variable, if you can't remember, we set up a couple of minutes ago to be our green color. So here, the background color is going to be brand, which is hash, well, the greenish color that we chose earlier. Uh, failed to import the file that header. So something's gone wrong already, that's good. Uh, so what's happening here? We're importing our header, which is that, oh yeah, so why is that not working? Yeah, I don't know, something weird happening, but it's working anyway. Um, so obviously this element has no height at the moment, we'll just force it to get, have some height. So we can see that this site header does have a green color that we wanted. So next we'll put in the logo. Um, if you haven't used Skeleton or any framework before, uh, it's, it's made up of like grid sections. So you've got one section of a grid and the 11, obviously the, those two add up to 12 in this case. Um, so all these bits here, you repeat over and make sure they add up to 12. So we could have 4, 4, and 4 to add up to 12. So here, if we go back here, we consider that this is kind of a um, maybe less than a quarter of the website. So we'll try a, a, a three element. So to do this with the, the skeleton and the framework that I built, you do three columns so that means with this emic uh, style coding that i'm using dot three and dot columns when we press tab this will become div with a class of three in columns uh, inside of that our logo will need to be within a link so we'll do a tab and we'll just link that up to be a hash link at the moment and we'll do an image and um, we'll do the image sources image and alex hyphen with model logo.png and we'll give an alt of alex with model Obviously this logo doesn't actually exist yet in the image folder, so let's do that. Uh, so I've got it here saved somewhere. Uh, where's it gone? Uh, there you go, there's my logo AI file. Just an illustrator. Let's leave that open a minute. There you go. So we'll drag this into Photoshop so that we can save it for the web. Uh, you can save it from Illustrator as an SVG, but for this video series, we'll just leave it as a PNG for the moment. SVGs are generally good for um, retaining the quality and they're a good file size. I might go, go on to it in one of the future episodes, but at the moment, we're just trying to get this website built up quickly. So when we got Photoshop open, create a new, fi uh, new file, paste my logo in, and then it's nicely there. Um, this is something that I find quite a lot. Obviously, there's some empty space around this logo, wasted kind of kilobytes that are pointless having. So we get rid of the background. You see, obviously, we can get rid of here. I've actually got a shortcut saved for it as function four F four. But if you go to image and trim, Photoshop will automatically work out where it can save you space and get rid of those empty pixels. So press OK. Um, just leave it on transparent pixels and trim all the edges, and you'll see that it's sized down. See the difference I made there. Um, again, not a huge thing, but just uh, every little helps to steal from Tesco. And save that as a PNG. Um, what did we say we were even going to call it? Alex-Wigmore logo, PNG. Save that. 
Let's see if that's working on our web page. Yep, it's there. Obviously, pretty big for the moment. We'll work on that. Um, we'll give this logo class main logo in the header. image to be a maximum width of 150 pixels for now it's only will ever be that size um, again we should probably think about things like retina at the moment I've saved it as a pretty big image because it's a simple image so it's not too big on kilobytes um, so already it's gonna look pretty good on retina which is actually what I'm working on here um, and I can already see this header section here needs some padding above and below so let's give it that Probably too much, but we'll see. Yeah, that's probably too much. Um, yeah, that should probably do for the moment. So let's quickly get this menu built up. So we've already used three columns. So ideally, you should get these uh, columns to add up to twelve in the way that I set it up by default. So obviously 12 minus three is nine. So we'll set up a nine columns. And we'll also, inside of this, give it a UL. And let's think about this actually. So we're gonna have for our menu a UL with one, two, three, four, five allies. Then within each side of those allies is gonna be the text as well and a link so let's use Emmet here to really quickly make that uh, structure so we'll have a UL inside of that we'll have an LI uh, well actually we'll have five LIs and within inside each one of those we'll have an A link and just press tab and that's our structure automatically created for us here uh, so if we tab across our first one was called home our next one was called about uh, what was it blog domains and contact now this is where we can really use sublime to be really efficient if we highlight all this section here uh, press command shift and L we'll split it into lines we can come across here because all this content is exactly the same we can use our cursor keys very easily hold alt and hold shift press command um, press the right cursor command and C we'll go back to here press command V and I'm guessing that our directory structure or our, our menu will actually link to these elements so then we can just highlight the first letter is currently it's uppercase we do command K and then command L to make it lowercase or if you don't want to remember that I think it's in uh, edit convert case and you can change it to be either uppercase or lowercase so it's a pretty useful feature instead of retyping things out say for some reason we wanted all this to be uppercase you can just go edit convert case uppercase and then everything becomes uppercase um, the only one is this home link we'll probably just make it link to a, the forward slash directory uh, so let's just save that same with these actually they should link to the forward slash let's just see how that looks yep so we've got home about blog domains and contact it's good enough for the moment um, so this UL will give it the class of uh, main menu in our header main menu and we want it to be a list style of none which actually is by default in the framework they're using but just in case uh, the A's that are inside our main menu we want to be uh, font weight of 700 uh, so that they get our our higher quality font, and also we want them to be the font family of. Well, let's just grab it from here. Uh, Monster font. Let's see how that works. Yep, that's good enough for the moment. And um, obviously these need to be next to each other, so we'll make them display in line block. And straight away, obviously they'll need some padding. Um, probably 10 pixels above and 20 pixels either side let's see how that looks yeah it's probably about roughly 
roughly the right spacing. I'll play with it in a, in a little bit. And we want them to have these A's. We want them to have text decoration of none, as we don't want them to have these underlines underneath them. And let's have a look how this is looking. We obviously want the text to be over across to the right side of our container. So on our main menu, um, actually, let's give this a um, we need to try and think of a semantic way of marking this up. We've already got the UL as the main menu. Uh, we can do main menu here actually, and it's the first time to actually we could use BEM, which is a block element modifier. Yeah, so on here we can see that you generally create a block, um, then the elements inside of it, you leave with a block text, and then you know that straight away it's an element with inside of there. And then modifiers will be things that kind of, um, well, as it says here, represents a different state or version of it. So it's kind of the basic structure. Modifier will be the same structure, is it maybe different color or slightly different variation of the same thing. Um, so if you want to kind of get your head around it, there's quite a few tutorials online about BEM, but we'll just reuse it roughly in kind of a, a way that isn't particularly strict to the structure, but the idea of BEM is just to get you thinking about how you actually lay your structure out um, so that it's a bit more semantic. So we've got our main menu, and then we'll call this main menu um, list. So it's a, if you go back to the structure, Sorry, actually, uh, it's an element with inside a main menu of list. So obviously we need to update this now. So our UL, which is wrapping all these things, was actually called main menu list. We just need to wrap all these elements here and cross in it. Um, this is where you need to be careful with SAS really. You can get nesting too quickly. Obviously all these are going to export to main menu space menu list space li which is going to be quite uh possibly too too highly and too much specificity um because this is three deep already we could just grab all of these and just say that the li is within inside of main menu because uh, these shouldn't really get affected by any other element too much so we'll leave it like that and now we can say what we've been trying to do i forgot uh Oh yeah, now, now we can text align, write everything that's in here. And we'll just give it a little bit of margin top for the moment. It's just cheating just to get this laid out. Just so it's roughly centered. Uh, let's make this 10 pixels actually. There you go, so that's roughly it for the header. Um, maybe probably need to look at these, the color of this text. Let's have a look, I think it, it's probably a little bit of a, not quite as dark a gray. And then obviously the next thing that we need to look at is how they actually behave when they're hovered over these links. So we'll make the color, uh, what we can do, because we've already set the, the color here, we can use one of the built-in uh, SAS features, which is a function called darken. So we can darken the color of that by maybe 10%. Uh, well, we probably want to lighten actually when they hover it. So when I hover this now, you can see it roughly goes a little bit lighter. I think we need to lighten it to maybe 35% uh, something like that. Or maybe we can try darken so it goes black basically yeah we'll leave it like that for the moment um, now it seems a bit weird but we'll actually jump down to the footer now and get this built just so that we got the two elements that could be on the site 100% of the time built straight away it's a bit of a weird thing to do but I personally always do it that way for some reason <laughs> So we got our header built, now we'll just do our footer, again HTML5 element, just so it's semantically marked up as header and footer. 
Uh, again, we know that this is probably going to be in some kind of container, so we'll do the container class. And this footer will give a class of site footer. Same as you did for the header, we'll put all our uh, all our footer sections in a CSS file for its own of sass underscore footer .css. Uh, Save that and we'll make sure to import it as well into our master file sheet. So site footer and we want the background color again to be our brand color. Actually no, we want it to be just white so we'll leave that. Um, and to put more markup in first of all. So we've got follow me, a couple of links and the copyright. So let's get this written out. So that is probably going to be a we do it over H3. It may seem a little bit odd for the moment, but it should make sense. Uh, follow me and We'll do the links here in a sec, in a minute. Uh, and copy, copyright, all right, wait, well, 2014. So now for the links, if you think about how this can be structured again, it's probably gonna be a, a UL kind of airline menu situation. So we'll do a UL inside of that. Uh, the allies we want, six this time so ally times six in each one of those we want an a as well and let's just tab across we want the first one to be twitter linked in about me be hans strava and stack overflow uh, like we did originally for the first header menu we can split all the lines we can cheat a little bit and grab these words because they're most likely to be the link really ah, messing up a little bit so if we come across shift highlight them paste them in uh, just do HTTPS for a moment for these ones twitter.com forward slash uh, generally uh, I'm at Mr. Wigster on most things but we'll type it in manually in this case so Mr. Wigster for Twitter uh, LinkedIn will be I am Alexander Wigmo. Uh, about me is actually Alex Wigmo, I think. Uh, Behance, Mr. Wigster. I will link it to my work in progress. Strava is athlete. Strava drive 7, I think. 831. Probably wrong, but we'll see. And Stack Overflow. I've written this one down so that I can remember this one actually. Uh, there we go. There we go. It should all be working. Uh, I think all these should be HTTPS, so it should work fine. Let's just do a quick test. Yeah, change this in .com, it's about .me obviously. And we also just need to style these up now. So in our footer, the site footer, uh, we'll give the UL class of footer links. display in my block again. Uh, we want them to have some padding. Maybe three pixels top and bottom, ten pixels either side, margin top of zero and probably five pixels either side. Font weight can be um Leave the font weight as it is for the moment. See how it is. 
and in the background will be our brand color of that green again. Actually, in the padding, we probably need to be a bit higher. And we can already see we need some border radius of three pixels. So obviously I did this a bit wrong. Uh, I put a link that actually needs to be inside of the ally. Let's tell these separately. So now each one of these is going to be the same inline block. And we want the, any A's that are inside the footer links to have no underline, so text decoration is none. And I guess we all need to be font weight bold again, like we did for the header. Let's just come across and steal this quickly. Now for this bit here, actually, just uh, as a side note, the way I'm doing this isn't the way you'd really do this in a, in a big scale project. I'm just trying to get across the way that um, how to actually build and use web fonts. Generally, you'd want to create classes and use those within typography for things like using different web fonts. So where we're using the Montserrat, probably shouldn't be declaring it in all these places because if we ever change it in the future, then we've got multiple places we need to change it. In the framework that we're using, we actually um, in the vars folder, we actually do describe the font family. So um, in a little bit, we probably will come back and replace these. Um, we're well, supposed to do it now, actually. So let's just redeclare the the heading family as Montserrat. So now where we've used this here, we can just do font family of heading family. And in our header, again, font family of heading family. And the footer as well. So now anywhere in the future, if we decide oh, we no longer like this Montserrat font, maybe we chose a different one or a lighter weight one or something like that, we can just go to our variables folder and say here, actually, we'll use Arial across the whole site um, for our headings. And straight away, change it in one place. And you can see all the way across the site where we've used that variable, it's changed. Um, so it's just little things like that, that intricacies that when you're working on bigger projects that you need to think about how they'll be maintainable in the future. Um, but in this web series, I'm just trying to get across a few different points very quickly. Uh, anyway, let's carry on. Uh, so again, we got the we got the links here changing. If you ever want to see what an element is going to look like when you hover it, obviously you can't really see the uh, starlings that are being applied to this at the moment. You can't see them over here. But if you click this element in Chrome and the aspect element, press hover. You can see by default when you hover these, you get a color of black. So, all that's really left to do here is just align all this content to the center. Uh, so, in our site footer, if we just do text align center, that's roughly about right there. And actually, I think probably the whole of this footer is using our Montserrat family of fonts. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's about right. Uh... And we just need to come back. And where we declared the typography here, get a font weight of 700 for all our headings. There we go. Uh, so this is looking pretty similar. It's just obviously it's 2008-14. Obviously this date here in a couple of episodes will make this PHP so that it automatically updates every year. We don't have to come back in and change it. Um, so that's for the next one. Um, so that's roughly it for our header and footer. Again, definitely not perfect by any standards, but this isn't what this web series is about. It's about getting rough you know, ideas across and how to make them quickly. 
Uh, so we may as well start on the actual home elements here for the masthead here. So let's build this. Uh, so we'll do a, a section HTML5 element for this. Uh, you can see we've got a H2. I can do it as a H1. Hello. In I don't do it wrong. And after that, job title. So I've given a, a P with a class small because I can see already that this font is a little bit smaller than this one. Uh, so that it's this little text from there. So generally on the full stack web developer. Um, and I can see this one is in italics. We'll give it a, a class of italics. What we haven't really thought about so far is our web fonts. We haven't chosen an italic web font. So we'll have to choose something for that now. Uh, let's just do this. HTML5 SAS. Actually, I don't want to write CSS3, it sounds nice. PHP SQL JavaScript and jQuery. There you go. And we'll describe, we'll give this section a class of home masthead. And these kind of things, um, sections, I usually put in a in a SAS, uh, again a separate SAS file. I'll call it for the moment. Uh, I think sections .scss. So all our little sections like this that may get repeated around the site, we're keeping here. I could have made it in a in a one called home, but I'm thinking this might possibly get you somewhere else. So semantically. We'll leave it this way for the moment. So, home masthead. We want it to have a background of an image. So, we'll do image. Uh, what would we call that image? We'll probably call it my desk or something like that. And we'll give it the color of brand. So, where's this going? Ah. Obviously, again, we need to import this into our main style sheet. So import sections. And we can see here now we got that the color of the green as a backup. We just need to set up our our image. On the Photoshop, I actually got this image on my work desk, but got a photo of my personal home desk that I'm probably going to use. So let's just drag this in. Just for the moment. So again, we need it to be this kind of greeny kind of overlay on it. So just grab our color quickly. And just create a new layer here. Just put that green over the top. Give it a fill. Mask that fill down a little bit. Maybe set to screen. Just play with these, see which one works best. a little bit of Photoshop mucking around here just to try and get this green looking roughly the same as I did it for the other one. Uh, let's just bring this saturation down a little bit. Uh, 
Uh, I should probably do referee for the moment. It is a background image, so we don't want it to be uh, too much going on there. I want it to be pretty easy on the eye. Just crop it down. Uh, Command Alt Shift and S will save the web. And we'll say it was a JPEG. And so at 100% quality, it's 323 kilobyte, which is pretty huge considering it's only a little background element that doesn't really add too much to the user. So we'll drop it down to. Uh, I've dropped it to 58 quality and we've gone down to 80 kilobytes and. 100% here, we can't really see a huge amount of difference in quality. So, this is 58, let's bump it back up to 100. I'm not really losing that much. I'm probably going to be happy leaving it around 59, 60, something like that. We'll see how it looks anyway. Um, my desk JPEG, I think I saved that in our sections as a PNG, actually. Yeah, so, it's going to be a JPEG. Mm -mm. Where am I going to find this? Did I save that to the right place? Where is it? Why is it not finding that image? You guys have probably worked it out already. Um, no, it doesn't look like this is saved. Or updated. There we go. Um, so obviously this looks pretty enough. We can do background image. Actually, we can no repeat here. We'll do background size of cover. Uh, so it's covering the whole of that element. If you've never used background size cover before, you should kind of put the um, vendor prefixes before it. Uh, so there's a website called Can I Use, and it helps you uh, with these kind of things when you when you can when and when you can't use CSS rules for IE and Firefox and those kind of things. Background cover is pretty pretty widely accepted by most browsers nowadays, but if you want to just be extra careful, you can put the vendor prefix of WebKit before it, so if someone's using an older version of Chrome, for example, they still can kind of get the styling that we're seeing on our updated version. Uh, we also want the text line to be center, and we want our color to be white. Um, at the moment, this H1 is getting the color here. Um, set itself. Uh, we can just overwrite it. It's probably not the best way of overwriting it. Again, we should probably think of a more semantic way of overwriting this color. But we'll just quickly do this. Um, and the whole thing needs padding of 5m top and bottom and 0 left and right. So, on this wider screen, we're seeing pretty, pretty much none of the images that we'd actually be caring about. Uh, we can change that by how the position, the position of the background. So we can do background position center, center. So it's centered vertically and horizontally, which it is anyway with cover. But um, that should roughly do. So we can do that shorthand again here. There you go. So again, I want to pretty wide screen here, not many people have screens as wide as, as this. So I'd say that's probably about the average screen width, about 1200. We can tweak this with media queries later on, so if the screen user, if the user the screen is using is above 1200 pixels, we can make the image of the background slightly different, something like that. So I was scrolling over a little bit on the right, uh, just remember to tweak the base width media query to start with where my base width actually is um, so now that's just fixed that little problem 
Uh, I'm just looking here. There's also this button element that we had on our flat design here. Uh, so just a contact button by the look of it. I did. Uh, so back to my index and the header. Section and we'll have an A with a class of button and um, button and a modified version of that called border. So I want it to link to just contact at the moment, even though that doesn't exist. And we'll give the text contact. So again, this looks like a pretty horrible button just because this is the way that Chrome is styling it by default. Um, well, the framework is styling it by default. Uh, so let's come across in our bits file um, where we can keep all these kind of repeatable little bits like a button and we'll style it up. So anything that's a button, we want the font weight to be weight to be 700. And if we want the font family to be our heading family. Um, And then when it's, this is where we can use SAS again to help with our BEM or block element modifier kind of structure. So when it's a button and got a modifier modifier of um, border, is that what I call it? Uh, yeah, border. I want it to have padding of, uh, it's just roughly a guess for the moment, 10px and 15px. And we want it to have a border of 1px solid white and a border radius of 3px and a background of none. And other, a background of none. Now this is um, I'm kind of overriding the default styles that I've set in my framework previously, or what has come from the skeleton framework. So, it kind of feels like a fighting ourselves. We we could just come into the base here. I think it is. I think this is where the buttons have been set up, and just remove all these backgrounds. Um, if we're not going to use them too much, and point is fighting ourselves. So, and we'll hover here, get rid of these backgrounds. That border, get rid of all that actually. We just want our color for it to be white. So we need to do more padding on the left and right. We'll make this 25 pixels. We can switch these to be. 0.5m and 3m, just the relative to the font size that's inside of it. Uh, it's kind of close, I think it might be Maybe two pixels for the border. One end padding. Hmm. Doesn't look quite right. I should roughly do for the moment, I guess. Again, this video series isn't about being pixel perfect, it's just giving you a rough idea of how we can quickly build websites in the way I would do them. Obviously, we generally pay a lot more attention to making it pixel perfect, but otherwise this video series would last months. <laughs> so what I'm doing for the moment for just part one of building the homepage, we've got the header and the footer, and the main masthead setup. Uh, we'll go on to the main tablet and project bit in the next video. See you there.